let's start see episode two and let's review what we have done before before we move on to something new and answer any questions that you have so last week the main things that we covered were maybe you can tell me what to refresh so okay so sure. last week we, i know that we need a track uh, a checker to, yeah. to validate um all the transactions and um the amount of the checker is, is is not a small quantity it's a it's a huge quantity yeah. so from there we know that um you know it's uh reduce the chance of a um on the corruption or as you say uh human um like cheating yeah cheating yeah oh. in in uh, no, uh, no, in honest uh, transaction yep so i also know that about the transaction yeah uh, the speed the security that yep. uh cryptocurrency bitcoin that bitcoin system is providing yeah so because of the huge um you know huge involvement so um cheating is very slim yeah. yeah okay so primarily what we have done last week was understanding validating and understanding what are the different trade-offs so it could be you know speed cost if you have, if you have high speed or high cost and all the other different things that affects the validating or checking of all these transactions so what we did the other time was really very focused on layer one which is the base layer. Now, there's a layer two involved, but let's not talk about that first. Let's move to the depth layer, which are all the different applications. Application. And we under today we'll understand a little bit more about all the different applications, which is basically, yeah, this one. So last week we finished layer one. We don't do layer two first because it's going to be at computation. Then we go to applications. Then once we have these two, we understand how they work together. Then next week we'll start having we'll start setting up your wallet, start creating Bitcoin, start having buying Bitcoin, start buying all the other stuff. Okay. So yeah. we understand applications first before we go to the we look at how to create account and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So one important thing to note in the application layer is the application layer is really dependent on, on the layer one. So how how I usually explain this is each layer one, it's like a, it's like a iPhone, right? So layer one, and then you have another layer one. So this is iPhone, which is iOS, and then you have Android. So you have some apps that only run on this thing. So we have, currently there's this thing called Clubhouse, you know, this app that only runs on iOS that you can only find on Apple. And then for Android, you have some, I, I don't know what kind of apps are over there, but you have some apps that's only on Android. So this is very important because when you look at all the other applications on it, most of the applications right now is very focused on this application only runs on iOS. This application only runs on Android. So this could be something like Bitcoin. This could be something like Ethereum. Mm. So they only run all these different other whatever things on only run on Bitcoin. All these other things only run on Ethereum. So that's a key difference. And before, okay, so before we go into this, let's understand the applications for Ethereum versus Bitcoin first. Then we know the difference between them. Okay, so the, what's the, the similar thing is that they're both layer one. So they're base layer. The difference is that Bitcoin is very focused on peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So, the main function is really a money. Money between peers, people. So I send you money and you send me money. And these are all the transactions. Or this is the application, right? With Bitcoin as the technology. And then we have application as the thing that is running on top of it. Does that make sense for us? Yes. Mm. So this is the only application. Very simple. And remember the whole thing about... about validators and you know these are checkers Checker. right yeah so you check you check how much money you have then you can transmit all that kind of stuff okay so that's all the transaction part so it started off with bitcoin because bitcoin was, was very very straightforward very simple okay then ethereum became an evolution like you, you evolve you upgrade 
So it upgrades because it becomes a what Ethereum wants to do is to be a super super computer. So Ethereum is actually the mirror image of the BTC. Something like that. So it's Im- mirror image plus upgrade. Mm. Yeah. It's not that Ethereum is better than Bitcoin. They have different functions. Mm. Yeah. So what Ethereum wants to be is a super computer. So if we, if we look back at the application with Bitcoin, it's mainly just P2P, right? It's mainly just transferring money. So it's very straightforward. With Ethereum, it's slightly different because... It becomes a computer that does more different different things. So we have, let's say we have a lot of different apps available. So this could be, you know, um, digital art. This could be something like the, the crypto USD. So one USD and one crypto USD is the same value. You know, for example, these are different applications. And then you have like lending and borrowing. So different applications, right? So just very high level understanding that with Bitcoin, it's mainly just me transferring money to you. With with Ethereum, I can do a lot more stuff because the function is completely different. So if we want to understand this, what what does this mean when it comes to the layer one platforms? Or what does it mean when it comes to the layer one technology? The main difference is this thing called smart contract. This is the key difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum from a technology standpoint. Okay, so going back again, before we get confused, this is just P2P transfer, right? Transfer money to you, you transfer money to me. The, the, the checkers, you just understand that, okay, we just add and minus the balance sheet. With smart contract, it adds more complicated things. So for example, you can you can add more information when executing something. And why uh, this Ethereum can have this? Well, this Bitcoin, you can't. Mm, good question. Can, can Bitcoin upgrade themselves to compete to the Ethereum? Exactly. Very good question. So when, when Ethereum started, they, they precisely wanted to do this. So they look at Ethereum and they see, okay, every time we make transactions, then it's good. You know, it solves the purpose of P2P transaction. We can add more information to Bitcoin and then we can add other code so that the, the computer, all these checkers can also do more than just plus minus transactions. Integrated with other functions. Correct. So upgrade, right? But but remember, we say that this is all peer-to-peer, right? So it's, it's the community decides yes or no. So when Bitcoin first started, the community said that, no, I don't want more things. I just want Bitcoin to be Bitcoin. I want Bitcoin to just do peer-to-peer transactions. And so Ethereum said, okay, fine. You don't want to do is fine. I will just copy and paste your code. I edit it, upgrade it, and I create a new system. So now we have the similar concepts. We, you know, it's all validators checking and making sure all the different things are executed. But we have different kind of applications running on it, different kind of functions. So the main function for Bitcoin is really the peer-to-peer transactions. The main function of Ethereum is to be a supercomputer. You can do a lot more things. So Bitcoin will still stay put status quo, refuse also status quo and do not want to change to a more complication of the transaction. Yeah, correct. Mm. Because the community doesn't want to do it, then okay, fine. Go for it. It's fine. Ethereum wants to edit it. Ethereum wants to upgrade, then go for it. Because we can put money in both systems, right? You can buy an Android, you can buy an iPhone, it's fine. So that's the main difference. So smart contract is the thing. So this is why later as we play around with Ethereum, where we where we play around with all these apps, right? There's, we have to pay fees because every time you move something within these apps, you have to pay fees. And this is where smart contract will become part of the different fees. So may I so, know who will entitle or who will get this fee award? Correct. So again, with Ethereum, you have these validators, these checkers. So the validators, so the fee go back to these validators. Correct. Okay. Then how about this um, this Bitcoin? Mm-hmm. If any transaction, would, would, would they apply any fee? Yes. So same thing, Correct. vice versa. Yeah. So... If we go back to good, very good question because I think I've, I missed that out. One of the things when you look when you are a validator, 
how do you earn how do you earn money so you earn money in two ways number one you for bitcoin you will every time you you check one of these things right you have to be paid for it right otherwise nobody wants to check so you get paid firstly by the system so with bitcoin this is how bitcoin is generated so every four year so it starts for example it starts with 50 bitcoin every time you check one you check something you check you get 50 bitcoins this was a long time ago every four years it becomes it becomes half so 25 bitcoin and then 12.5 bitcoin and then 6.25 bitcoin it gets half and half and half and half i think now it's 12.25 it changed uh, last year so every four years it gets half and half right you mean you just have to validate one transaction yeah. and system will pay you correct yes so yes that's the that's the way you just validate you just check right you just check this transaction and then you get this amount of money so you, you ever you ever share that one transaction need like millions of people so millions example one millions time like what you say no. 12.5 this is only rewarded to one awarded to one person oh because whoever is a faster correct oh, exactly okay, so okay. that's why it becomes so expensive that's why that's why it's very difficult to come into the system because you need to have all these different different super computer correct, to... super hardware to make it very fast and then you be the, you become the first one when you become the first one then you get these this reward understand so this this is the reward to become the validator right mm. so this is the the first reward is by the system the second reward is by the transactions so right now this system is quite we do remember what I told you there are different types of consensus mechanism. So different types of mechanism is involved. Let's do this the simple one first. So buy the system and buy transactions. What do I mean by buy transactions? So if me and mom, you, right? I pay you money. This amount of money is a transaction. Mm. And the thing is, let's say now is um, now it's like crazy period. Everybody wants to buy, right? We call it a bull market. So like good times. A lot of people want to make a lot of transactions. Then everyone is just paying and paying. and Everyone wants to do the transaction. But how do we prioritize them? Or how do we make sure that... Because all these transactions, they require work, right? You, you need the machine to run. You need, the, you need a lot of energy, Time electricity. Exactly. So you need to pay for that. So how do they how do they prioritize? Yeah, you just prioritize by the transactions. So you get to choose them. So let's say I'm I need to pay you very urgently. So I, I have very high transaction fees, like four dollar signs. Someone else doesn't care, just pay one dollar sign, some people two dollar sign, some people one dollar sign, some people super urgent five dollar signs, some people just three dollar signs. So based on that, the validators will because if I if I do the transaction, then I earn this amount of money, right? So, of course, I'll see, okay, $5 sign. Your priority number one. $4 signs, your priority number two, and all that kind of stuff. So, so it's, it's like a word, like, uh, 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 express fee. Yes, for exactly. The express yeah. fee for the checker to Correct. prioritize the work. Yes. So, this one, you get to choose. As, as, a, as a sender, I get to choose how much I want to pay. Later, we'll go back. When we start playing with all the, the understanding what the different tools are there out there, we'll we'll do this like, you know, we'll check what is the average price. So all these different things, we call them guess. Guess price. Yeah. So it's like you pump gas into your car, then your car can go. You pump more gas and then the, the car can go faster. So this is some this is something that we will have to check when we make all these transactions. Now, everything this this guess price is very important or this transaction fee price is very important why because everything you every time an asset you know we call these different like crypto assets right when an asset moves have to pay we have to pay because every time it moves it means that these these validators will have to check if it's if I move it or not, and then I have to update the system to make sure that things have moved, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of work to do. So every time you move something, you have to pay. Which means if I have if I have wallet A and I have wallet B, so maybe this is my internet wallet. 
and this is my um, a different this is an app wallet right and this is a hardware wallet so you know a physical thing that I can put money in like a thumb drive these are two different wallets both are my account you know but these have two different wallet names like two, two different bank accounts if I transfer one Bitcoin from here to one Bitcoin from here do I have to pay or not yes correct so, because regardless is whose account, as long as activate the transaction, there is a fee applied. Correct. Very good. So, so every time and any time it moves, then I have to pay, right? So this is something that's very a very important thing that's quite different from banks. So if I have a multi currency bank account with DBS and I transfer from SGD to USD, I usually don't have to pay the transaction fee ex except the FX rate, right? But in in crypto, you have to do that. So this is just Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is quite a bit more specific, a bit more standardized because it's just peer-to-peer -peer transaction. This is where Ethereum and smart contract comes in, which is a bit more complicated. Number one, smart contract is, it's not, a, it's like a, a digital contract that says that if this happens, then do this, right? So it's a, it's a, instruction to tell the machine that hey if it's this then that so, regulation yeah like like uh, regulations or rules for the system so this is the smart contract that defines the rules for the system and then sometimes you can have a lot of this then 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 whatever so all these different things are a different execution and this thing is is an execution and you have to pay you have to pay again, right? Because this, this is machine working. So every time the machine works, you have to pay. So this is why as we go and play with all the systems, you will realize that there are different kinds of transaction fees. What do I mean? So let's say, let's say we have two kinds of actions. Action one and action two. Action one is going to be very simple. I'm going to put... $100, so I put $100 into system. This is very easy, right? This is something like a peer-to-peer -peer kind of transactions. The smart contract doesn't need to do anything. I just need to update the system saying that $100 moves here. So this might just cost $1 sign. But if you do a different action, something like use that $100 in the system, which is this hundred dollar to put into to put into um a financial strategy. This could be a, a different thing. So all these financial strategies we'll check them out, you know, later, but not now. So there's a specific financial strategy where you say, okay, system, system number one system, I give you a hundred dollars. Now I want you, the system, to to manage the hundred dollars for me. This would require a lot more effort and energy, right? So this might cost like three dollar signs. And this dollar sign, they, they are based in Ether, which is the ETH, the currency. And this Ether is, is, still, is still money, but this is, Bitcoin is money for you and me, right? Peer-to-peer. -peer. Ether is kind of like money for peer-to-peer -peer systems or application to application. So this is, so this is something that's a bit different from, for Ethereum. For Ethereum? Yeah, Ethereum. So Ethereum is where your smart contracts, right? Mm, and right. smart contracts is different kind of pricing and smart contracts. Smart contracts, every time they execute, you have to pay transaction fees. More di different types of transaction fees because you have different types of transactions. Okay, so look, look like every single transaction I need to pay. Correct. So is it worth to pay if I'm using such system sub software compared to the traditional bank transaction good question so very good question so number one there are different systems right number, number one there are different systems as in what what you do with all, all the financial strategy in crypto versus in traditional finance you are investing or you are putting money into different kind of stuff so different types of returns so the bank might give you I mean, 0.01 percent return and crypto might give you a lot more. Sometimes they usually give a lot more because right now everyone is using crypto and 
the the returns are different. And so there's something to look at. The other thing is this this amount of money, they they are not fixed. So maybe if a lot of people are transacting, it becomes very expensive. If very little people are transacting, it's maybe 95 cents. And so, and it also depends on the amount of money, right? If I'm transferring one, let's say $100,000 in Bitcoin, worth of Bitcoin, transfer from me to my friend in some, some other country, the transaction fee is much lower than transferring $100,000 USD from my bank to my friend's bank. But the cryptocurrency and the physical currency, the value is different. Yeah. So, so they were measured by the Bitcoin currency. If let's say you 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 because you cannot compare apple to apple. If let's say this is USD yep. plus um, so called like one Bitcoin. Yeah. So the the key good question. So it depends on what kind of transact transactions you're looking at. If you, if let's say someone sells, someone sells a car based on Bitcoin prices. So I'm going to sell you the car and you give me one Bitcoin. Then that is going to be one Bitcoin. But usually people sell it in, I sell the car for, I don't know, let's say, let's say, let's say 30,000, some other country. The car costs $30,000. And then I see what is the current price of Bitcoin. And I give you the equivalent amount in Bitcoin. So you can do this kind of stuff. It's basically, you know, do, do I want to pay in USD versus SGD versus GBP? You find the current exchange rate and you just pay. So that is whatever your agreement is with the other person. So in this type of transaction, we become uh, uh, this uh, oh. ETH transaction rather than uh, Bitcoin of the peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, no, so it depends. If it, so Bitcoin and Ethereum are two different systems, right? Two different systems. So if we only if we do the car sales in Bitcoin, then you use the Bitcoin system, which is the the Apple system. If you do the if you want to make all your transactions in Ethereum or Ether, then you do the Android system. Like two different systems, they don't match. They don't talk to each other. Mm. Late, we can talk later about how they interact with each other, but that's that's later. So this what this concludes the layer one application for us. Do you have any questions before we go into the understanding more of this? You know, the smart contract, the action number two that becomes more complicated. Um, I'm good for time. Okay. Being. So, what we have covered is the the underlying you know layer one system. Now let's look a little bit more at the applications. Like, what types of applications are there? In general, the applications and layer one are two different. Two different projects working on it. So the layer one, let me use this. Layer one could be, layer one could be, let's say, my company. My company started layer one. And then applications, you have different kind of applications. So it could be your company, that's company, you know, Wesley's company, Xavier's company. Different companies, then they have the applications, but they all use layer one. So you have Apple. And then you have Google, Facebook, whatever that runs on Apple, right? Support. Yeah. So the more they use the application or more applications built on it, more people using applications, the more layer one is going to be working because it's more transactions to validate, more things to do, the smart contract will be working and that kind of stuff. Okay. So that's that. So let's look at the different types of applications. The biggest, most popular one today is called D5. D five yes D is decentralized finance finance. So in decentralized finance, this is very I think this is really interesting because it's trying to not exactly rewrite traditional finance of the capital market. It's just trying to see what what can we what is very slow or inefficient in the capital market. How can we put it on decentralized finance, make it better, or what are the systems that we can play around with to improve the system. So there are a few different types of decentralized finance. So you have you have the easy ones first. So you have lending and borrowing. We'll play around with that later. Lending and borrowing, you have things like exchange or trade. So lending and borrowing is that I have 100 US dollar, but in crypto version. 
And then I want to make money out of it. How do I make money out of it? So other people will be borrowing and that kind of stuff. Exchange is that I have 100 US dollar. I don't, I don't want US dollar. I want to change to something, some other cryptocurrency, some other currency. So it could be, let's say um, YFI, or it could be something like AAVE, or it could be something like, I don't know, whatever the Sorry, may I know why is YFI? Yeah, these are the different, remember I told you there are different applications? Each application has their own currency, has their own tokens. Usually they have their own tokens. So this one. You have different applications on running on this supercomputer. So each of these different alphabets, they represent the different types of applications. So USD is... How many applications are there? Are, uh, currency are there? Hundreds, thousands of them. Oh. A lot of them, yeah. So it depends on, yeah, and, and there are more and more and more. Right now, we just want to look at oh, how can I trade from, how can I exchange this to this? And what kind of systems can we use? So we, we'll talk about that all later, but so are the systems out there. So this one's lending and how do I get a percentage return? This one is that I have this, how do I change this? How do I earn more or how do I change? And then you have, are they sharing the similar value? Oh, very different. All completely different. All the value are, are pretty much quite independent, and they are they yeah they're all completely different. So what what is the background of all each currency that can back them up? Okay, so these are not currencies. Good. Okay, so how about this? Let's let's talk a little bit more about. Okay, I'll show you one more example. Then we talk about the difference first. Okay. okay. So okay, this is something that we want to talk about. What well, one more example? Just example. Something like, uh, let's do insurance. So insurance is part of finance and insurance is, I have different types of insurance things. How do I ensure that my trade will be, you know, there's no hacks and everything. So there are different types of insurance. But let's just understand what, what is in decentralized finance, right? There are different types of financial things. Then you have, you also have, Stuff like your derivatives. This is a bit more complicated. So you have options, you have futures, you have more complicated financial products. So this is also growing in So crypto. this is more on the future strategy. No, no, no. Uh, futures are a financial product. Um, yeah. So these are things that we, we don't talk about yet because these are complicated stuff. Okay. So we don't... So I'll show you one more type of application and then we talk about the difference between each currency. Yes, yeah, type of them. So the other application is crypto... How should I call it? Let's call it crypto NFT. Okay. So NFT, NFT yes. NFT. Mm, you, okay. NFT means non-fungible tokens. Okay, before we go into what's crypto NFT, what is NFT in the first place? NFT is, let's say I have non -fung fungible means something that I can change one for another. So if but I have, trade. no, more like they're the same thing. So if I have one US dollar, you have one US dollar, then we can put the both US dollar in a bucket. At the end of the day, I can just take any of them. It works the same to me, right? Correct. All one US dollar are the same. But for non-fungible token, let's say Barack Obama signs one of that one US dollar. Now that becomes very unique. You can't change, even if someone has one US dollar, I'm not going to exchange it because mine is very unique, very precious because there's one, the only one thing in the world. So that's the non-fungible token. So it means it's unique, right? Unique. But the value is not fixed. It depends on the... So all the different value, have, they come from a different place. So later we'll talk about how they have value, which is the difference between, you know, like USD versus YFI, RV, all these different kind of stuff. But understand that, for example, all these, most of these DeFi stuff that we talk about, they are fungible. That means they can, I can, I don't care which, whose $1 note this belongs to. I know that all $1 notes are the same. With crypto NFT, this is slightly different because every token is unique. So this is, this is a bit more like token equals same. 
and this is a little bit like token equals unique. Right? So, un unique. Every token is unique. So, how do we see this playing out? For example, we have art. I can create digital art. And this is like quite a big thing. The second thing, it could be esports, video games. So with video games, I can create, I can, for example, I create, in my video game, it has a lot of, it has land, right? So this is a land, and I can cut the land up to a few pieces. Now, each piece of land is unique. So I can put each piece of land as a token. Ooh. Yeah, so I can buy this that that actually represents this piece of land, which is quite cool. And, and but then, this is a virtual, right? Yeah, this is virtual. You can also create in real life. But look, look, this is a virtual. What is the basis or what is the backup for this virtual land? It's it's just the game. So oh, it's so, just a game. Yeah, it's in the game, and then okay. each token represents this this thing. Or we can put it in real life. So in real life, it could be something like I have a property, I, I have a house, and I can each of this piece of house is so, so the actual you know square square foot is one token. So you could buy that. So these are just different ways to explore crypto NFT. Then you know there are like a lot more. Okay. But let's go back to the, the main question you want to ask. What is the what is the value. difference between yeah, what are all these different values thing and everything? Firstly, before we talk about all that, let's talk about USD. So USD is usually the main currency for a lot of things, okay. even right now. So let's talk about the, the types of crypto, but USD, but crypto version. Okay? So right now there are we call this we call this hack coin or Stable coin. What does this mean? It means that one crypto USD equals one USD. This is something that is very important, right? It's key, right? So if my if my asset is like Bitcoin is not exactly backed by anything. Long story short, in a very summarized general way, Bitcoin is not backed by anything. That's why Bitcoin prices can go up, can go down volatile right yes one good one important thing is that we don't want something that's so volatile we want something that's a bit packed a bit more stable a bit packed to something so like one like mirror image of something and we use usd so i have one physical us dollar note but i i cannot say i cannot tell my computer uh, computer can you turn this us dollar note into a coin so that i can use it in in the crypto system the computer doesn't do that. So how do we... You have to bank in the transaction. Something like that. So we have to create a, a crypto version of USD so that it equals to one USD. There are a few ways of doing that. In general, there are three main ways. I talk about the ways first, then I talk about the, the kind of coins available. So the first way is off-chain. Everything is blockchain, right? Off-chain means physical, like a bit more physical. Off-chain, collateral. So off-chain collateral means, you know, when you get mortgage for a house, you have to put your house as collateral and then you can borrow money out of it. So off-chain collateral is something like, I am a bank. I will, I will take in $100 bill. or I'm a, I'm a company. I will take your $100. I keep the $100. And then the output is that I give you $100 of crypto USD. Yeah. This one makes sense first? Yes, yes. Okay. So this because is, they take in the hundred physical yeah. one dollar one hundred dollars. So they will give you one hundred of your cryptocurrency. Yeah. So this one you, you can talk to the computer can understand, the computer can move here and there. But with the transaction fee, will this hundred still remain at hundred? So that is everything uh, you so if let's say there's a transaction fee, because this company creates this hundred dollars, this this hundred US dollar of crypto, right? Hundred crypto USD. So the transaction fee doesn't apply yet until you move this around. Yeah. But to change the hundred dollar bill to the hundred USD, maybe the company will charge something. But that's if it charges one percent, then you have to pay one dollar to the company, not pay one dollar to the system. Yes, yes. But good question. So that's off-chain collateral. The next thing is on-chain. 
collateral. This is this one becomes a bit more complicated. So this one is that you have the physical one hundred dollar bill. So every every dollar is actually backed by something. The, the the next one is a bit more complicated because it is maybe I don't have hundred dollar bill, but I have ether, ETH. Right. I convert the ether. I convert to this the cryptocurrency. To, yes, crypto to crypto USD. So again, you have a company that does that. You give them the ether, and then they create the crypto USD. Now, this is where it's important. Ether prices change all the time. Like $100 bill is $100 bill. It will always be $100. But with Ether, it changes. Today is $1,100. Tomorrow is $1,095. So it changes all the time. So how can, if it changes all the time, how, how do I create this stable? How do I create, get $100 out of it? So usually what they do is, they over collateralize by fifty percent, so I need I need to put one hundred and fifty dollars worth, worth of ether, and then I can get one hundred dollars one hundred crypto USD out. So if it fluctuates, at least the system is still safe. But whoever using the ether will be on the losing side. Yeah, in a way, yes, and there we'll talk about that all of them later. That is something like that. So we have to give a lot more so that we can create that crypto USD. So that is the general idea of us. We, we'll talk about all the different details later as we look at the different systems. Okay. So this is the on-chain collateral. The last one is algorithm, uh, algorithmic stable coin. So it uses algorithms to get that one US dollar. This is completely very complicated and we don't talk about this yet. Okay. So just understand that there are three types. How this crypto USD have value is because it's either backed by actual money, physical money, crypto assets, or the algorithm. That's three of them. Okay. Okay. So now let's look at the types of currencies. Where can you find, what are the, the types of available? So for off-chain, Collateral, no, not these. Not right now. We're just. I have one hundred US dollar extra money. How do I put them into all these different assets? These assets are not money, but this is the currency. This, yeah, they're not exactly currency. Explain a bit later. We start with we start with going to understanding what are the available options first. So with option collateral, you have things like USDC, USD. Okay. What is a C and T from? Yeah, the different companies. Or company. Yeah. No, different companies. Is it these are different companies creating these coins? So for example, this could be there's no real world example. But anyway, this is by a company that you put one hundred dollars in and then they give you one hundred crypto USD, right? So this is a physical one hundred dollars. Yes, you, you give to this company this option. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, option. Yeah. yeah. So and then they create one hundred crypto USD. So this and is from the company C. Yeah. This 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 company this company is called Coinbase. We'll open an account with them later. So this company is called Coinbase, and Coinbase says that okay, if you give me one hundred dollars, then I will create one hundred USDC. Each USDC equals one US dollar. Yeah. Okay. So must be any a lot a lot of people maybe just want to pump in the one hundred dollars to exchange to a cryptocurrency. So we become like US like the Excel spreadsheet like like you'll be spread like yeah this can keep increasing doesn't matter because this is not this is not Bitcoin this is just the crypto version of USD that's it. If a lot of USD. yeah so if a lot of people want to use more USDC. They put you. They put US dollars into the system, and the systems create more USD, or, or more crypto USD. That's it. So with all the currency on this are limited. Or there is no limit. So this one is unlimited. So this system is completely different from Bitcoin. That's why this system is completely different from all the other coins or all the other tokens we're going to talk about later, because this one has unlimited supply. The supply comes because I put one hundred dollars into Coinbase. 
and then Coinbase will create 100 USDC. Then people can use, I can give to you, whatever, doesn't matter. That's it. Yeah. So Tether, uh, USDT is a different company. This company is called Tether. Similar concept, but let's not go into different details. The concept is that I give you $100. Oops. You give me 100 USDT. So this, this crypto USD, this crypto USD, this company, when they create crypto USD, is called USDC. This company that creates USD, that creates USD is called USDT. This is the same value, but different kind of wording. So for example, the, you know Bahamas, the super nice place. So Bahamas currency, oh no, no, Singapore and Brunei. Singapore and Brunei. One Singapore dollar equals one Brunei dollars. That's it. Correct. So we can we can use Brunei dollars in Singapore because they're worth the same thing. So same stuff. I can use USDT. I can use I can use USDC. They all each one is one US dollar. That's the concept. Their currency um pair. Not not pair matched. Yeah, we call them pet. Pet. Mm, pet. So same same concept. So USDC. Theoretically, USDT. equals USDT is the same stuff. They're all just crypto USD, right? Different company issuing it. That's it. There are a lot of other drama going on behind there, but let's not go into that. Okay. It will become too confusing. So, so we will later, or once we get started with this, we will go to Coinbase and we'll, we'll figure out how can I change my, my $100 to 100 crypto dollars. The reason what? why I need to change in such is because I want to do the transaction. Correct. And like, I have to pay the validator. Yeah, also because when you want to buy all the other things, when later we, let's say we can buy all these other tokens, they're not going to say that, please give me 100 US dollars to my bank. No, they will say that my computer only understands USDC, USDT. Pay me one of them, then I can give you the tokens. Mm. Because the computer doesn't understand that dollar note. So we need to change it. Mm. So this, this system, this thing, we call this the physical USD. We call this fiat. So fiat is the central bank money, right? USD is issued by the US central bank. So we call it, call it fiat. And then this USD, we call it crypto. So this off-chain collateral thing is really how do I change fiat to, to crypto. crypto? Yes. So this is very important because the, the crypto system doesn't understand USD. So we need to create a USD version, which is, this is where it gets a bit more complicated because imagine grandma or grandpa or whatever old person trying to say, I have money, put it in crypto. Doesn't work like that, right? You need to understand how can I transfer money in my bank account into money in the crypto world? It's like how if I play video games, I need to transfer money from my actual bank account to the money in crypto in the video games, right? Different world, different system. So this is one way to do that. Then of course, there are a lot of other banks that allows you to buy Bitcoin in credit card or whatever, but this is just one way. Okay, so going back, this is just a system to, to do fiat to crypto. Okay, we, sometimes we call this on-ramp. You know where you go up a system? Yeah, so we call them on, on off ramp Because we change the fiat, which is not in the system, to crypto, which is in the system. So this is, this is one way we can create them. So we're going to get some USDC later. The so other, uh, if let's say like what uh, we have been trying to learn that what uh, part of the cryptocurrency is, mm. we have to use a physical currency to, to go to the off-change Corrado to change into either USDC or USDT for some investment. Kind, yes, kind of, pretty much. So when you, remember I told you there are different things in decentralized finance in DeFi. Mm -hmm. So you have all these other tokens. You just can't, you can't tell them that, hey, I've got, I've got money in my bank account. Can you call up Citibank or call up DBS to ask them to transfer money to you? No, we have to change them to the crypto version and then they speak to the crypto version. That's why it's important. Then we go on to the other type, which is the on-chain collateral. 
which means I take assets from the crypto assets and then I create USD, USD equivalent. Okay, so remember, this is USDC, this is USDT. We now introduce a new company. We call it DAI, D-A-I. So what DAI does is that I will take ETH or I can take a, a lot of other currencies, but let's just put ETH. So maybe, maybe someone paid me in, someone bought my book and someone paid me in ETH. And, but I want to change ETH to USDC and because then I can use USDC for everything else. How do I do that? Number one, I can go into one of these exchanges, you know, one of these exchange platforms that we can talk about later. So this is like the stock exchange. And the stock exchange, you've got buyers and sellers, right? So I can tell, I can tell the stock exchange, everyone, I've got one, one ether. I want to change it to USD. Can you, can you, uh, I want to change the crypto USD. Can you help me? So that's one way to do it. The other way is that I put ether in and then I put one ether in. And from there I get DAI out. So DAI is, you know, crypto, crypto USD. This is one DAI equals one USD. So the, so you use the ether will be become uh, 100 uh, DAI of the currency. Yeah, so if if let's say let's say for example, one ether is worth one thousand five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and then I can get out one hundred fifty percent collateral. So I can get out one thousand dollars worth of die. Oh, because yeah. you have to reduce, so it's become yeah. one thousand die. Correct, right? Makes yes. sense now. Yes. Okay. So this is the system. That's it. Okay, and then there's a lot of mechanism behind. We we talk about them later, but just understand that's how we can change ether to die. Now you ask a good question. Why would if I have ether, why the why would I want to put it into die? Because I might if I go into the the market, if I go into a exchange, I can get one thousand five hundred dollars out. So why would I want to do this? Well, one example, one of the ways is that maybe I think that ether will go up in value. May, I think that maybe at the end of 2021, 20, I think Ether will worth $3,000, double in value. Because of, so I want to keep my Ether, right? I want to keep it because I know that I think at the end of the year, it will become $3,000. So if I go and sell, if I go and tell everyone to exchange, guys, I know Ether is worth $1,500 now. Can you change with me? Then I will lose out opportunity cost, right? I lose out in December, when it becomes so much money, then you go, ah, I should have kept it and so I can gain more money. So what this system does is that I can still keep my ether. I can still keep my ether because I want to keep, I want to hold ether for a long time. But at the same time, I can, I can kind of like borrow money out of ether and use it. Future money. Kind of like that, yeah. So it's a I, very, very, very risk. Uh, do you know that the whole financial market is like that. So that means you can mortgage your ETH, but yes. you, you still take the 1000 You take $1,000 out of uh, your mortgage. Yeah. So if anything goes very bad, so that's what happened March last year, March 2020, that suddenly the whole market fell and a lot of things go bad, you lose your mortgage. So people lose their ETH because it became under-collateralized and then you, you lose your you lose your house, right? If you mortgage your house and then suddenly the house value goes down, the, the company ETH. get back, the bank gets back your, your house. Same thing. You will lose your ETH. Gone. That's it. So this so this ETH will actually go back to the company that exchanged for you. Something like that, yes. Then this will the, be died. The, uh, so the company is called MakerDAO. So the company that produces USDC is not called USDC. The company that produces USDC is called Coinbase. The company that produces DAI is called MakerDAO. So the, 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 system, money, so the system is a lot bigger than just DAI. Okay. So if in this situation, mm. the physical of the of the ETH, uh, sorry, or the, that means asset, the, the, asset. the asset of the ETH will go back to, to this company. Yeah. So this company, what the company will do on the other end that you don't know is that they will, they will go and sell the ETH Basically, what bank does, right? When bank takes your house back, the bank doesn't need your house. What does the bank do? The bank will go to the open market and say, 
everyone, I've got this house available because this house owes me money, sells the, this house, and then I can use the money to cover my loss. My loss. Same thing. So make it know will take your, your heat ETH or your house, go up to the open market and saying that, guys, I need to sell this ETH because the system owes me, owes me and then we need to cover the loss. So that's the general idea. Mm. So this is DAI. So what we will do, I think there's a lot of information today, and but next week we'll actually start creating, we'll, we'll create USDC, we'll then create USDC. So next, so next week, with all these money stuff, number one, we will create USDC. So we put US dollars in and get money out. And then number two, we will exchange USDC to DAI, for example. And then we will also exchange, which is buy or trade, USDC to another currency, to another token. Okay, so I want to know. Yes. Um, I want to pose a question. That, yes. Uh, I I I know that somebody can just you know trade so called the cryptocurrency and earn the difference. So I want to know how is the mechanism and the prep work on such trading. Mm. Okay, so trading wise is a different. So we have trade. We talk about tokens later. We talk about your, your question first. Because that that's I think that's something that a lot of people ask me. I never really addressed it. So let's talk about trade. Crypto currency. Crypto trade. Crypto trade. So crypto trade, there are in general, there are two main categories. You have the top ten by market which is the market capitalization. So the value of, of Tesla, the value of Google, you know, top 10. This will be stuff like Bitcoin. Let's go to CoinGecko. CoinGecko.com. So this is, this is like a website that tells you, that tells you all the different uh, prices of assets, right? So... We have a few over here. So we have BTC, ETH, USDT, dot, XRP, ADA, LINK, LTC, BCH, and BNB. So, okay, these are top 10 by market cap. So in general, sometimes, when, in general, the basic, most people, in general, most people are trading these assets because the top 10 by market cap, you can see that the, the liquidity is quite liquid. So people, big traders are trading a lot of this. Most of them, in fact, yeah, most of them are all layer one. Remember layer one? Mm. This thing, yeah. So they are the different types of um, Android, Android system, the Huawei system, the iOS system, a lot of them. They're mainly more, more or less this, this stuff. So the, the first type of trade is this one. And how people earn money from it, I just buy. So Bitcoin is, you see Bitcoin goes down now, right? So let's say I buy Bitcoin at 32, let's say $32,500. So this is in USD. Right, USD. Yeah. So, and then let's say for some reason something happened and then USD, uh, now it's $35,000. So, so I, I buy here. I sell there. I sell here. So I, have I earn the difference. Exactly. Uh, 2005. Uh, yeah, 2005. So this is one way to trade. Everything is risky. Everything is risky. This is one way to trade. I do not recommend that. What I'm teaching you is something more complicated, which is a lot more fun, a lot more risky, a lot more returns. I'm not guaranteeing anything. I'm just teaching you right now. So the other way, okay. See, the other way is DeFi. What's DeFi? It's a kind of decentralized finance. Decentralized finance. So all the decentralized, so this is top 10 by market cap. They're mainly layer one, right? They're mainly layer one. And DeFi is basically finance, it's dApps, which are the applications, and they're all finance related. So think of, yeah, all the apps on the phone is finance related. So if you go to Coin, CoinGecko, you go to DeFi, they basically have all the top 100 coins by the, the market cap 
of so of DeFi. So all the DeFi stuff, and then you can see Link, WBTC, blah 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 blah. We'll we'll all play around with them later. So these are all the different currencies, and you can see they worth so much money. One Link is this amount of money. One Aave is this amount of money. One SNX is this amount of money. And you know these are the trading stuff. I'll, I'll not. I'll just teach you what they mean, and then you can trade this actively as well. Yeah. Okay. So remember just now I told you that there's this this YFI Aave thing, YFI AAVE. That we have more like yeah SNX UNI. Um. MKR, LINK. So these are a different kind of financial application that is running on. They're not mainly Ethereum. Uh, they're not all on Ethereum, but they're all quite a number of them are on Ethereum. So if we link all the economics back again, when more applications are built on Ethereum and more things on Ethereum, it means that Ethereum will be doing more transactions, right? And every time we change something, we have to pay in Ether, we have to demand more Ether. And that's in general, that's how the price of Ethereum goes up. Which is quite different from Bitcoin. Okay. And that is why for MakerDAO, if I have one Ether, I don't really want to give it away. I don't want to sell it. I just want to keep it. And then, and then because I think the prices will go up, for example. Okay. So these are the different types of coins that exist. They represent different things. So YFI is kind of like um, personal finance management, kind of. Aave is lending and borrowing. We'll talk about them all a bit later. SNX is derivatives. UNI is exchange. Sorry, what, what, what is this mean? Der derivatives. Derivatives is kind of like I... Derivatives is a complicated financial instrument or financial product. It's, so I can create, so, okay, I know how to do this. You know Tesla? And you can trade, you can trade Tesla, it's called TSLA. You can trade Tesla stocks in the New York Stock Exchange, right? Right. So you go, to, you go there and you can see and then, oh, the prices are good, I buy, I sell, whatever. Now, can we do this in the crypto market? Can we trade Tesla in crypto? Um, unless you change your currency. Yes. Okay. So in that's one part. It's correct. You have to you have to make this. You have to make TSLA. You know, crypto friendly. What does it mean? What What does it mean by making TSLA crypto friendly? It means that my system, my computer, my crypto computer system, whatever, they need to understand what is TSLA. Because I can't take I can't take DAI, which is USD equivalent, and I go to the New York Stock Exchange and say, uh, guys, can I use DAI to buy TSLA? New York Stock Exchange will say, are you crazy? No, I don't understand what's DAI. You're right? But I can't also, but I want to get, I want to use my DAI to buy TSLA. How do I do that? So this is where the company, SNX, comes in. They're called synthetics. What they do is, in general, you can create crypto TSLA. Remember we have crypto USD? Yes, the, the C and the T. Yeah, USD, C, USD, T. So we, we create crypto version of USD. Now with synthetics, this company, we can create crypto version of Tesla, Tesla stocks. That means the price of crypto Tesla, so let's, because it's called synthetics, right? Let's call it synthetic TSLA, moves accordingly to TSLA. Okay, so I'm must saying. be there's a demand. Yeah, so this is, this must is, be a supply, must be have the demand. The demand that people want to trade TSLA yes. and then you have a supply of, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So would they convert to the physical real world? TSLA, the, Tesla stocks? Yeah. No. So they create a virtual one. Correct. They create a synthetic version. They create a... This is something that's all... It's these, this... Okay. Weird, right? But yeah. this is something that's very, very big in the... In the... Financial market. You know... Sidetrack a bit. This is actual... Physical... Trade. 
So let's say when when we buy, um, you know, remember oil? The other time oil dropped and it goes very crazy, right? So there's few companies that actually trade oil. You have um, like you have airlines companies. You have uh, I don't know bus companies. They will they will go into all these different. They will buy and sell actual barrels of oil because they need them, right? But at the same time, traders look at this and say, "Oh my gosh, prices move so much. I want to earn money from it. How do I do?" So I create I create uh, derivatives to to trade that, and then we we basically trade price movement. But we don't we don't actually settle the the physical. We don't give you physical oil. We just trade the price movement. So what does it mean? It means that if prices are different, then we use USD to settle the difference. But I'm not going to give you the actual barrel of oil. Can you imagine if someone comes to me and, and give us a barrel of oil to go at home? Doesn't make sense, right? So this is this is called derivatives. Derivatives like trade. Virtual. Yeah, kind of like virtual trade. So in the real world, in the in the this world that we live in, the physical world. Derivatives trade is like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. And a lot of people make money here. So, honestly, you can in make crypto, a lot of money, you also can lose a lot of money. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. And so, whatever that we do in crypto right now, it's not exactly super novel. It's not exactly 100% new. If we just take the things that exist elsewhere, and then we find a new way to do the same thing. So, we talk about all the mechanisms later. But I just want to show you, you know, all the different kind of systems that exist. Remember MKR? You know, remember we talk about MakerDAO? I told you they die, right? And then MKR is is also MKR is also part of the system. So the system has two tokens. MakerDAO has DAI, which is one USD equivalent. And then you have MKR, which is whatever the prices, whatever the prices say, right? Different. So and then they have different functions. Everything is different. But I'm just want I just want to show you what they are. So MKR is part of the, the lending. Oh no, it's part of stable coin. And Link is an oracle. But let's not go into that. It's way too confusing. So basically, there are two types of crypto trade. Yeah, I, you can I was just wondering see MKR MKR value see, is see, one thousand something. Yes, you you see this. The, C die, C die, okay. C die, C C die and die are different. <laughs> this is what I yes. was saying. Because if let's say they are the like uh, uh, a a a child children under this, yeah. One is zero point zero two cent, and the other mm. one is thousand four. Yeah. So C die and die different thing. Okay. Okay. So even so, it I, has to be exactly the same. So C die, die. Yeah. This is not even a dollar. Correct, but it's zero point nine nine eight nine one. This is thousand. Yeah, because they have different functions. This this die, it's it's almost one dollar, right? It's it's almost one dollar. And the thing is, it, it's not one hundred percent one dollar. There's a fluctuation, maybe 05 percent fluctuation. That's that's normal. And then with MKR, it's a whole different kind of system. Usually, usually, so we have all these companies, right? So we have. Maybe let's do Ave, we do we do um uni, we do MKR. These comp these tokens, these are tokens, they're not currencies. Okay? Not equals currency. To me, currency is something that's that is like kind of backed by a government, like a central bank. Or currency is a it's a medium, it's a means of payment, right? So for example, gold bars or gold coins. Will you go to the supermarket and tell the auntie that I'm going to buy fish and vegetables and I'm going to pay you in gold coins? No, right? So we use Singapore dollars because it's a currency. It's the, it's the most accepted means of payment. Agreed. Yeah. So these are not means of payment. These are something else. Okay? And right now, we don't really have a way to classify them. But in general, they, they represent... The, in general, they, they represent the company or project that, that is part of all these DeFi stuff. You see? Like YFI is personal management, Aave is lending and borrowing, derivatives exchange. They represent something. Yeah. 
So that's the main difference. And this is, I think in right now, and how do they, they gain, they get value, they get all these price value. They're all in very different ways. The way MKR gets value is very different from the way Uni gets value, which is very different from the way Aave or SNX gets value. Yeah. That's why it's, this, this DeFi trading, it's a bit complicated because they are all different. And I mean, if you think about it, if you look at the, the, the stock market, right, you have Tesla, Amazon, Facebook, Google, they're all very different. But in general, we can more or less understand how the, the price of one Tesla stock or the price of one Amazon stock, other than speculation, you can find out because you use cash flow and each, each token or each Tesla represents the earnings, right? Or equity. When you own, if you own like some Tesla, you actually represent the future earnings of Tesla. You get dividends and then maybe voting rights, you get equity and stuff. And in general, this is how Tesla gets accrued value, right? That's how Tesla gets traded and all that kind of things. These companies in general is kind of similar. Let's say you and I, uni, but they don't have, they, they don't have equity. They don't have equity. And earnings, it kind of depends, but not, it's quite difficult to explain. It, it's not exactly earnings, it kind of depends, but that's one of the ways how you and I get value. In general, economics point of view, it's the utility of the token. That's, that's how it gets value. Because the token is useful, people need to use the token, there's demand for the token, there's limited supply, so the demand will shoot up. The price will shoot up. Because mm. more demand, less supply, blah blah blah. So in general, that's how it gets its value. Mm. So today, I think that's a lot we covered today. And just a quick recap of what we have covered. No, we don't need this. A quick recap of what we covered is what is the DeFi space and what are the what are the applications? What are the applications on layer one? So the applications. On, on layer one is really the DeFi stuff. And the other thing, we, we didn't talk much about it, the non-fungible tokens. So like art and esports and like real world assets and whatever. We'll talk about this next time. Understand the DeFi first. Why? Because you want to talk about crypto trading or you want to understand what, the, what crypto is. I'm explaining it to you. So we can do two types of trade. I mean, we can also trade this non-fungible token, yeah? For real. But complicated. I don't want to confuse you now. Let's just do finance related. So the first one is all the top 10 layer one, mainly layer one. Then the other one is all the DeFi tokens. Decentralized finance. Yes. So all these are finance related. So what we have covered today is understand if I want to put money here, how do I get started with putting money here? How do we do it? Open a trading account. Okay. You don't need a trading account. Yeah. But you don't need a trading account, but you need something to interact with them. What is that something? Um, yes. Chain. So we need we need some we need like a USD that can speak to them. You know, it could be USD, it could be other things, but we need something to be speaking to these companies or these different platforms or these different tokens, and then we can buy them. So the first way is to take my actual physical US dollars, put it into USDC, and then we can play with that. Mm -hmm. So today we covered how we get this. Next week, we are going to start putting money in. So next week, next week, I think what we should do, I'm going to write it down because just in case I forget. Otherwise, we go like way too much. Next week, we will do one. We will open a crypto wallet. Otherwise, where you put your money, right? We will have crypto wallet. Number two, we will... Buy USDC with USD. So what do we can we buy USDC with other currency like sterling pound USD, uh, uh, SGD? I I'm not so sure. I because we're gonna use Coinbase to do that. I know okay. other companies. Yes, Coinbase. I use Coinbase because th there's no fees to that. Okay. Mm. But you can use my USD. I have USD. The and the third thing is we're going to buy some DeFi coins.
coins. Do you also want to buy like Bitcoin and stuff? Mm. You also want to buy that? And then we will buy. So we will look at two things, right? We will buy some DeFi coins and we will buy, you know, top 10 by market cap. And we'll just buy, maybe we buy, maybe we buy, you know, we buy the, the three stuff, BTC, ETH, and DOT. No point buying USDT because we're going to get USDC anyway. So let's skip that. We just buy BTC, ETH, and DOT. Okay. Okay. And then, and then we also buy some DeFi coins just to show you how it works. The, the wallet stuff is, I think the wallet stuff, we will also, will take some time to talk about this. And this is very important because if you lose this, you lose everything. Just like the just like, rumors. No, it's not rumors for real. Not These for real. people, they lose 7,000 Bitcoins in the thumb drive because they lose their thumb drive, nothing. Or you cannot find your password to your thumb drive, also nothing. So, and there's no customer service to call. There is no one to call. You lose your password, you lose your password. Will people hack in? That's another thing. Yes, it's possible. And that's why insurance, remember I told Play you, part. yeah, insurance, super important as well. But we had to pay the insurance. Of course, nothing is free. But it's okay, we don't do that first. We do everything slowly. We just get these things and then we can get you started with playing with them. Sure. Okay? Thank you. Okay.